everybody video here for you today now over the past month or so i've been sharing a lot of lectures related to videos i have made and this is kind of in the same light today a couple years ago i made a video on the Iceman and the valcomonica rock art found in this area of the world but let's go down here and just take a look at where the Iceman was found in 1991 this is kind of on the border of austria and italy way up in the alps this is the area right down here Here's a spot where Otzi, as he was later named, was found in 1991, over 5,000 years old, maybe 5,300 years old. But here is the special area that he was left. Why was he left here? Well, the lecture I'm going to share kind of goes over that research, talks about sacred landscapes, but man, that is a landscape that is very impressive right there, that is for sure. Here is a video I made in June 2019. I actually included a lecture clip in this video from two years ago, but I talked about Otzi, the Iceman, in this video. He had intricate tattoos on his hands and wrist and other parts of his body here. You can see him here. But that was very interesting, over 5,000 years old. But I will leave the link for this full video below. Now in the lecture that I'm including at the end of this video, the lecture talks about the Val Camonica rock art found in the nearby region is the Iceman discovery. Here is a video I made in 2016. This is fascinating rock art in this region and he kind of attaches it to the Iceman story coming from that time period but here is a video I made just about a year ago. This rock art is fascinating and I'm glad it was included in this lecture. kind of connects two things that I have talked about here on my channel. Here is a look at Otzi the Iceman when he was found. Here are some artifacts that were found with him. But this didn't seem to be just a normal death, a natural occurrence. Something special was going on here. Here's a copper axe that was found with him. Very well made from maybe a little over 5,000 years ago. And here is the memorial to the Iceman high in the Alps today. It's just a pretty cool thing to include on my channel today. Now I'm going to share about 11-12 minutes out of this 16-minute lecture. And I will leave the full link below. This is called... Death of the Iceman, Reflections on Sacred Landscape and Ritual Practice in the Neolithic Alps. This comes from European Association of Archaeologists. They make their video shareable. This just came out. I thought this was very interesting. It was new information to me. But I just thought the story of the Iceman is very fascinating. Europe's oldest mummy found with an axe that was about 99.7% pure copper. I just think this is very interesting tattoos on his body but he talks about the sacred landscape that he was found in just thought this was cool glad to add it to my channel and here you go thank you today i'll be talking about the Iceman, a neolithic uh, mummy found high in the alps i doubt there's anyone in this room who has not heard something about him and if there is i suspect you've wandered into the wrong annual meeting I've used the word reflections in the title of my talk today because I'm not an expert on the European Neolithic. On the other hand, I've spent years researching sacred landscape in other parts of the world while working with uh, the Iceman and specialists on our frozen Andean mummies. My interest in the Iceman grew. I began to think of areas that seemed to warrant further research and personal visits to the Iceman site. Today, I hope to demonstrate that a theoretical approach focused on sacred landscape can provide additional insights into the circumstances surrounding the Iceman's death and the place where it occurred. Increasingly, there has been awareness of the important roles that landscape and ecology played in the lives of Neolithic peoples, and that beliefs about them led to impressive rock art, monumental structures, and the selection of places to make offerings to the deified forces of nature. Among these, mountains played important roles due to their being sources of water and of the weather that affected the fertility of crops and livestock. These beliefs are based on ecological facts, and it is no surprise that they've been found in traditional cultures around the world, both in the present and in the very distant past. We all appreciate the Alps as a beautiful snow-covered region in which to enjoy sports and other activities. But this was not the case during the Neolithic, when concern was focused on the utilizing of resources and surviving in the lower mountain valleys, a difficult enough task in itself. 
The discovery of the frozen body of the Iceman uh, demonstrated that humans had adapted to great heights and extreme conditions in the Alps as early as the Neolithic. Because his body was found at over 3,000 meters on a high pass on the border of Italy and in Austria, it was first assumed that he had died from exposure. The Iceman site is located right here, again, covered in snow as it normally is. And this is Finalspitz, uh, one of the other two of the highest peaks in the range. The, uh, turns out that the sun actually sets here at the uh, June solstice. And the sun has been depicted, of course, on rock art on, on the stone menhirs, and solstices have been found as important throughout Neolithic sites in Europe. The place where the ice man was found is usually covered in snow. It was actually here. Uh, it, it's an interesting, keep this in mind, this uh, red colored gneiss nice rock, which kind of borders the site. Here again, where he was found, and Simulau, and as it turns out, the solstice sun rises from behind it in December. So you have basically uh, uh, the passage of the sun during the entire solar year. It's actually found at this spot. And the cap and part of the mat or cloak, as some people think, was actually found in this spot right here. What I think hasn't been noticed is this formation right here that virtually looks like almost an altar or burial site. The art, uh, artifacts like the bow uh, backpack uh, frame and uh, axe were found here a little bit about five meters from where the, the body was found. Deep gullies are rare on mountain passes in the Alps. The sides of this gully provide general protection and the deepness allows for water to freeze and snow to remain and thus help preserve organic material, creating a kind of refrigerator. Dr. Hafner found only two similar gullies in his search for them on passes in the Swiss Alps. In one of the two, he recovered uh, Neolithic items similar to those with the Iceman. A particular interest is a boulder in which the Iceman was found, and uh, it's likely that he, I feel, that he was originally placed in the hollow space here. That's the lowest point. I think that then later the body was slightly moved as you had the course of freezing, melting, and movements of the glacier and so forth. This natural refrigerator, complete with its own defrosting, uh, along with the freezing nighttime temperatures, would have helped preserve the body until it was covered by snow. As alpinists know, this probably would not be long in coming. The location of the ice man thus begins to make logical sense. It lies between two of the highest peaks that give origin to water in the valleys below. The December winter solstice rises from behind one of them and sets behind the other at the June summer solstice, marking the sun's yearly passage. The place is a gully natural protected both in general terms and by a hollow space wide enough to allow a, a body to be fit in its lowest point. The cloak and, and uh, the matting that were supposedly found with the Iceman were also could have been used to help covering at the time. Of course, this would have helped. Uh, prevent uh, decomposition. Open air sanctuaries have long been noted in the Neolithic, and distinguishing ritual sites from secular ones is still a problem for archaeologists working a couple of millennia uh, later. Whatever happened that led to the Iceman being killed by an arrow, it appears likely that his body and equipment were specially placed, and since this was the time, at the time of death, it means that they were ritually treated. Here I use the definition of ritual offered by Alexander a performance that affects a transition from everyday life to an alternative context. This uh, just provides a, the drawing of uh, what, where the Iceman was actually found in 1991. This is where the cap was. My theory is, is that the body was actually in here and then moved slightly. Years after the, the Iceman had been found, it was discovered that he had been uh, hit by an arrow, one shot caused certain and virtually immediate death. The bowman was likely close to the Iceman to have placed a, a shot that was near perfect. The Iceman had been in good health when he reached the pass. However, he had eaten a meal before ascending to it. He even 
ate ibex and deer meat while above 3,000 meters within a few hours of his death. These meal me uh, meals of meat were not part of his normal eating habits. The types and the conditions of the artifacts found with him add to the impression that he was not fleeing an enemy or making a normal crossing at the pass. Twelve of the 14 arrows had not been finished, and two that were complete appeared to him deliberately broken. The bow was also unfinished. Thus, nothing of the bow and arrow assemblage was usable. The dagger also had a broken tip. Deliberately ritual rich, breaking of weapons at barrels have been found elsewhere in Europe and some sites dating to the Neolithic. No artifact has brought more attention to scholars than the copper axe. Barely used, it is one of the earliest known copper axes in the region, and copper tools mark the beginning of metallurgy. It, therefore, must have had considerable value at the time, yet it was not taken, instead laid near the bow in the backpack. When taken together, the amount, the variety, and the condition of the Iceman's clothing and equipment suggests that he was not on an ordinary journey when he died. But we're more interested in the region near to the Iceman, where menhirs appear, along with petroglyphs. They were mainly just petroglyphs down around Mount Bago. Valcomonica is not far distant from the Iceman's home territory, uh, and he must have known about it, possibly even visited it. The flint, for example, used by the Iceman came from the Lasani Mountains. And they were even more distant than, uh, than Valcomonica. And the artifacts that were found in Remedillo bur burials here uh, were virtually still further away and identically to those found with the Iceman. The Neolithic rock carvings and the stone menders have often been uh, interpreted as being linked to fertility and sacred landscape. Supporting mountain worship at Valcomonica is the associate of the sun's passage aligning with mountains that dominate the horizon as seen from the prominent rock carvings. Here is an incredible system of uh, petroglyphs. The interpretation of mountain worship is influenced by the sun's passage. And uh, in this case, one of the examples that was used by archaeologists there is that the uh, sun rises and sets at the equinox behind two peaks. Uh, this one this happens to be the, the setting sun at the equinox when I happen to be there. The depictions of anthropomorphic figures on men here is, is suggested by the carvings of daggers and axons above a belt. Sun worship has been assumed due to the existence of sun uh, symbols on several of the men here. They've been interpreted as either for worship of ancestors, uh, warrior ancestors, or of deities. In short, to have been used in rituals. The church at Lotch, uh, located right at the opening towards the Schnauz Valley where the Iceman went up to the past, uh, had an altar stone that turned out to be actually a men here. Depicted on it was one of the few scenes carved in the Neolithic Alps of one man killing another, in this case of a man being shot in the back by an arrow. Whether or not this refers to the Iceman can't be proven, but the men here's location at, in the home of area of the Iceman, it's dating to roughly the same time period, and the axe depiction on a ritual stone monument does suggest that the carving portrays an important ritual event, not a secular killing. When we examine the context in which the Iceman was killed, the location, the manner of his death, the types and condition of the items with him, and the site allowing for his body's preservation, it becomes more likely to me that the Iceman received ritual treatment at the time of his death. And since he was killed at or near that site, this naturally leads to the possibility that he was a ritual sacrifice. The Iceman was a remarkable discovery. Our, any interpretation of his death should take into account that he died in an exceptional way at a unique site that was itself situated in an exceptional location. And finally, that all occurred in the heart of the Alps, one of the world's most dramatic mountain landscapes. Thank you.